The year is 1821. The Greek Revolution is just beginning, James Monroe is president, and Missouri was just admitted to the Union. Life is great. Hi there, my name's Charlie Adams, Ow. and I'm about to take you on a journey throughout Kansas City's almost 200-year history. Let's start back in 1821. That year, a Frenchman from St. Louis named Francois Chouteau, Fran Francois Chouteau, Francois Chouteau, Francois Chouteau, well, he's a fur trader and he's about to found Kansas City. His uncle actually founded St. Louis, so I guess founding uh, major cities in Missouri is just in their DNA. Him and his cousin set up a shop in a waterway in an area that is now the Northeast Industrial District, or as I like to call it, the NID. That's the area on the downtown side of the river where you cross the bridge and the Al Capri is like right next to you. Not that I would know anything about the Al Capri because I'm not legally allowed in there. <laughs> Francois and several other French families had just created the first non-native settlement in Kansas City. Another guy named John Calvin McCoy was interested in trading too. He set up his shop four miles south of Francois. He considered his land a gateway to the west, therefore naming it Westport. Nowadays, Westport houses the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art, which proudly boasts some of my excellent paintings, and the Uptown Theater, where I have definitely performed many performances. By 1845, Westport had replaced Independence as the gateway to the West. Little history lesson, the Oregon Trail actually started in Independence. I'm not sure if that's as drilled into other kids' heads as it is here. They made sure we knew where the Oregon Trail started. So good old John McCoy also eventually purchased a lot of the land that ended up becoming Kansas City's downtown. On June 1st, 1850, Kansas City was all like, hey, can we become a city now? And Jackson County was like, I, I got you. Oh my god. Oh, that was stupid. So the county granted a charter to them. Granting a charter to a settlement basically just means that you are saying that you, the government, recognize it is a city. It was incorporated by the state in February of 1853 as the city of Kansas. However, Kansas was not admitted to the Union until 1861. That actually is part of the president's question of why is the majority of Kansas City in Missouri, aka why is the better part of Kansas City in Missouri? Ooh, Drew, can I get a dab for that? <sighs> Kansas City takes its name from the Kansas Indians who lived in the area. So does Kansas, but Kansas City, Missouri came first. In fact, the city of Wyandotte decided to rename themselves as Kansas City because they thought it was unfair that Missouri got to have all the fun. And that's why there are two different Kansas cities in the U.S., Kansas City, Missouri, and Kansas City, Kansas. Each city operates completely independently with different mayors and everything. Speaking of mayors, Kansas City, Missouri, elected their first mayor, William S. Gregory, in 1853. He signed some of Kansas City's first laws and helped write the city charter. One of the rules that he wrote in the charter required that the mayor be a resident of the incorporated area. Well, Will lived outside the incorporated area and therefore had to resign. <gasps> Dr. Johnston Likens had to complete Will's term. The 1850s brought... Brrrr, that's, that's a drum roll. You guessed it, the Civil War. The big debate at the time was whether the territory of Kansas should be admitted to the Union as a free or slave state. Oh, there was also a debate over whether owning people is good, but you know different matter. Residents of Jackson County were pro-South and pro-slavery. Losers. There were fights along the border of Kansas and Missouri as much as six years before the war officially began. On August 14, 1863, a building on 14th and Grand, now where Sprint Center is, collapsed. What was significant about this building was that it was being used by the Union Army as a temporary jail. The collapse of the building killed some people that related to William Quantrill, who was pro-slavery. He then attacked Lawrence, Kansas, destroying the city and killing 150 people in the process. In 1869, Hannibal Bridge was built. It was the first bridge to cross the Missouri River. It was replaced in 1917 by the second Hannibal Bridge, and then was replaced by the Broadway Bridge in 1956, later renamed the Buck O'Neill Bridge in 2016. I'm going to be honest, I went down a rabbit hole of the history of Kansas City bridges while researching this part, but that's unimportant. In the 1880s, William Rockhill Nelson bought the Kansas City Star and in 1933 opened the Nelson Atkins Art Museum, the previously mentioned museum where all my masterpieces are. The land the museum is on was actually his estate, and the Atkins name comes from his wife, Mary Atkins. In fact, the East Wing is dedicated to her. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was reading this sentence that says, At the start of the 20th century, political machines gained clout in the city. Like, I know clout is an actual word, but to hear it said in an actual article? Uh, you know what? Since I'm distracted now, I might as well go to the commercial break. Here's Charlie with more. Thanks, Charlie. I'm going to interrupt this Kansas City documentary to bring you random Kansas City fun facts. Ready? Go. Walt Disney created Mickey Mouse in Kansas City. His office is still on Troost Avenue, however, it isn't in that great shape. The fountains at Coffin Stadium are the largest privately funded fountains in the world. In fact, Kansas City's nickname, the City of Fountains, comes from the fact that it has the second most fountains in the world. It is second only to Rome. 
Hallmark's headquarters are actually here in KC. Swope Park, where the Kansas City Zoo is, is actually twice the size of Central Park in New York. Another fun fact, it's actually home to the best barbecue in the world. Oklahoma, or actually now Kansas City, Joe's. And that's not just opinion, it's actual fact. Jackie Robinson used to play for the Kansas City Monarchs, which was the longest running team in the Negro Leagues. Alright, that's all. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Random Facts about Kansas City with Charlie Adams. In 1922, the J.C. Nichols Company opened the Country Club Plaza, which was the U.S.'s first planned shopping center. Now it's the 2000s. Blockbuster is still a thing. The stock market's going to crash in a couple of years, but we're just going to ignore that. Also, I was born. What a time to be alive. Kansas City is extensively reinventing their downtown, trying to attract tourists. One of these projects is the Power and Light District, which is a big entertainment area downtown. They even have a Burger King Whopper bar. Drew and I have eaten there before. Honestly, it's just like a normal Burger King. I don't really see the difference. Anyway, that's enough about the Whopper bar. Sprint Center opened in 2007, which is where Drew and I saw Queen that one time. The Coffin Center for the Performing Arts opened in 2011, which is where Drew and I saw the Kansas City Symphony play along to Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets that one time. And that brings us to today. KCI is under construction to create one terminal instead of three confusing terminals. The streetcar is a thing again. There's going to be a new hotel right next to Bartle Hall. It's a great time to be alive in Kansas City. And that's just the future of Kansas City. There's so much about this city I could talk about in possible future videos. <laughs> so I just want to say, Casey, I miss you. So uh, thanks for watching. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you subscribe to the channel. And comment the video if you comment the video. Okay, bye.